probably creating them and having the time to do it uh, because there is uh, so much time taken just teaching and marking and our, our day-to-day uh, instructor uh, time. There, there's a limit to what's uh, available to create these OERs for our students so that would be the biggest thing. And I think in addition to that what comes with time is money because time is money. Finding the funding to be able to um, create them and also like I mentioned in our talk the cultural shift. I think if more people are willing to share what they've created, I think it would be a lot easier. Well, I think there are a few things that are challenging in, uh, in mainstreaming OERs. One is just resources. It, always, it takes time and effort and you need buy-in from, from uh, instructors and students to make that sustainable. The other thing that is a risk for us, particularly in Canada, is uh, how we work with different kinds of cultural groups, how we work with indigenous lo- knowledges and indigenous languages. Um, and, and that's an emerging space that I think is just still very challenging because lots of the, if you look around at the, uh, the open community, there's a lot of very white faces in that. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that we just don't understand yet. Yeah, yeah, that's what's really great about this conference. You see there's so much focus on that and being able to understand that, uh, you know, it, it, it has its own um, set of risks that come with, with working with communities and, and they're not all the same. Indigenous knowledges are not homogeneous. So I think the uh, two biggest challenges in Canada are, one, there's still a challenge of awareness. So getting faculty to understand that, uh, you know, using OER is is, uh, quite easy. There's lots of choice. Um, Creating OER uh, obviously involves some time and work, but, uh, you know, there's lots of options for openly licensing material. I think in Canada, what's really unique about us is we don't have a federal ministry or department of education. And so education is always divided at the provincial or territorial level. So we have some provinces like Ontario and BC, which are world leaders in supporting open education. And we have other provinces where there is no support at that provincial level. There's no federal support. And then it all comes down to what's being done at an institutional level. So it can be very varied. Uh, The institution I'm from, we have a small group that supports OER, but we don't have any funds that are specifically for open educational resource creation. Uh, Faculty have to take on the time themselves and, uh, you know, they can't hire a student to get involved. I think one of the biggest challenges is just people and time. Um, OER adaptation, creation, or even just incorporating open practices into your professional life takes time and it takes work. And there is maybe a misconception that a small investment will go a long way. Um, I think it needs community support uh, and that involves, you know, people at a unit or department or across a state, across a province, across the country, across the, the continent. And at this global conference internationally, we need to come together and find uh, other ways to invest in the work and invest in the people who are doing the work. So the, the people is, I think, finding and supporting the people is the biggest barrier yeah. to successful OER implementation or open practice implementation. Would you like to add something? Yeah, I think for me, one of the biggest challenges in open as a whole is being very mindful of how we define open and how we use open, um, because we want to be really sure that we're not replicating systems that have caused so much harm to our students in the past. Mm -hmm. So we really want to make sure that we're creating something new that's going to serve the needs of all students and not just the students who've been previously um, served before. So okay, so I run a project called the Open Education Influences, which is a student advocacy um, initiative aimed at developing professional skills and career experience while engaging in open, right? So we do lots of research about student experiences of open, staff experience of open, and one of the big challenges is that awareness needs to be, I think, sort of equalized because right now there's there's spaces where there are communities of expert practitioners, but then there are spaces of complete novices and people don't even know that what they are doing is an open education practice, for example. 
you know. Yeah. So getting the terminology understood yeah. and out there they is... They don't have a label in their head. Yeah, the labels. And I think that, yeah, we, we speak about pedagogy, but we don't speak about open education pedagogy is enough, you know in the larger mainstream sort of community. This is still seen as a niche area and I think it should be seen as something that everyone has to engage with. Because it's cost saving, it's money, um, it's access, it's, it's language. And, and I think language matters. And once we can put things out there for other people to engage with and re-language, we get context and we get universality in education instead of the global north. And I'm not picking on the global north, but it's something that needs to be said. So I think the biggest challenge that we have is that we know that Western knowledge systems, academia, education in general has really misinterpreted indigenous knowledges, worldviews, community histories, history in general here in Canada. And so one of the biggest things that we find when we're challenging OERs or thinking about OERs is how do we kind of flip the narrative? Mm -hmm. So when we have the OER, how do we bring in an ethical understanding to this and sort of challenge like what is open and what's not supposed to be open? If we're having traditional knowledge is shared, they probably shouldn't be shared in there without that community consultation. So maybe open, like I was saying before, isn't the right word. There's something else for it. We just don't know what exactly to call it, especially the traditional understanding of an OER. It's not really, it's an indigenous educational resource. It's not really an open educational resources because open has a different meaning for indigenous people and what's open and what's not open. Different context, different yeah, semantics. Different context. Uh, exactly, yeah. yeah means that um, for, for the time being it's more an expert thing or people convinced by open source but the main public uh, the, is the large public. They use Wikipedia, they are looking on the internet to find anything that can be useful to their course and they sometimes don't realize they do open education and if you have no conscience that you are actually using a material that is or not licensed, you, you don't know what you are really doing, you don't feel good with these intellectual property rights questions, and sometimes you refrain yourself of making something really quality, of quality. So um, I would love to have uh, radio stations, uh, TV shows, influencer that comes to us and ask us why we think it can really change education and the way we, we learn and teach. In a way, it's a question of raising the awareness about, about the, the topic. Yes, I think uh, that the, the teachers, for example, they, they listen to radio and they can be interested to hear this. But of course, there are other canals that are more professional and very um, targeted to teachers in each countries, it's where you get your trainings. And when I speak to many of, of to, to, to those people who train teachers, uh, they are very interested. It's as if there were still no digital skills for teachers or there is something, but it's, it's quite new. And there are not many teachers f for these complicated thematics that are around uh, uh, again, intellectual property law and uh, my learning materials. So I'm actually a computer scientist. So in my field of work, the question is, how can we use technology? And in the case of computer science, the real technology here is going to be artificial intelligence in order to help the ecosystem of open education to work better. In the case of open educational resources, for example, this means having search engines, this means also helping to actually clean material in order to have it compliant with the rules of open education, this means licensing, for example. So there's a lot of challenges there for a computer scientist. Um, so my, uh, the challenges I can see are there, but then there's a huge amount of other sign, uh, challenges, which are the sad challenges with society. How do we convince teachers to do this? How do we convince students? In certain countries, we can see that students are an extremely active force. In others, it's less the case. There are very big differences in politics, in policies in between the countries. Working on all this to understand how we can onboard everybody, that is the big challenge.